party. Today I'm going to kind of teach you, not kind of teach you, <laughs> I'm going to teach you. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to paint um, something very similar to a daisy. So basically like a white and black version of a sunflower. So here's an example of one that I already have done. Um, obviously this is a sunflower. Hopefully you can see it okay. Yeah, really cool. Love this design. Um, and you can virtually use any color that you want with it. Um, so I, I did kind of start off already with, um, the base coat here because the idea behind glass painting is building. <laughs> so you build on it and you also paint backwards. So if you've never had experience doing that, um, or you've never done that before in the past, um, this will be something new for you <laughs> to learn. Uh, so yeah. So anyways, with this one, um, for my center part of the flower, I used, uh, white and black. For this flower, I'm just going to use white and black um, and just basically play around with those colors. You know, you can use uh, a lot of different variations of uh, grays and different things to get different effects. Um, even when you're just using two colors, it's actually really awesome. I'm about to show you. So for the, <clears throat> for the center part of my flower, what I did was I used this pouncer brush. So what it, what it does is you just kind of dip it in the paint like this and you'll kind of dab it off a bit is what I like to do. Um, just to kind of tell, I'll get, I'll do a little sample here. Grab a little bit of white and I just basically pounce it like this. So hopefully you guys can see this okay. So just pounce the brush because that gives it a lot of like effect. Um, and so that's what I did to the bottom of this. Um, but then after I did kind of the more gray white color, I did want more black underneath because that's what I really want to show through. Um, when we go to paint our petals on this, the black I really want to be prevalent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more pouncing here of the black color. little on the edges here just a little little bit just to give it a little bit of dimension and when you go a little bit past where you originally painted it gives it like that uh, kind of like there's little hairs there you know if you look at an actual flower um, that's pretty much what they what they look like so the idea is basically to try to reverse paint a flower. <laughs> a little harder than what it sounds, but um, <laughs> that's pretty much the idea behind it. So and after I get it where I want it, I'll take a look and just make sure that that's what I want. So flip it back over and take a look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's coming along really well. Okay, I really like that. Very satisfied. You could put as many details on here as you want, essentially. Um, I tend to stick with simpler is better. <laughs> I've learned through a lot of years. I mean, I've been doing this for mm, probably close to 15 years. Uh, I've learned that oftentimes simpler is better. The more that you work on something, uh, sometimes it just becomes overworked. Although I don't want to discourage anybody from 
putting a lot of time and work and detail into their into their piece. Um, you know, I paint a lot of glasses at one time, so I really have to be considerate with my time um, when I'm when I'm painting a lot of these. So, um, those of you who who make art for a living um, might might resonate with that in a little bit. Um, so anyways, uh, due to the uh, paint being extremely wet right now, and I've been touching this glass a lot, which is a big no-no, you don't want to touch your glass a whole lot, um, simply because the oils in your fingers will actually prevent the paint uh, from actually like adhering to your glass <laughs> during the baking process, and that's also something that you don't want. Um, so I'm going to put the video on pause for right now and just let this dry for a few minutes and I will come back and show you how to paint the petal part of this process here. Okay, <clears throat> and we're back. So the base of this is... <clears throat> Maybe it's still a little bit tacky, I'll admit, but as long as it's mostly dry, it should be okay. And as long as you're not slathering, and I mean like really piling on a lot of really wet paint um, and thick layers and then continuing to drag your paintbrush over the top of it over and over again, it should be okay. Um, so like as I stated before, I was touching the glass a lot, so that's something you really don't want to do. Um, so pretty much when I... I'm doing glassware, what I'll do is I'll kind of hold it like this. I'll put my hand right inside. Um, obviously, you can wash the inside of the glass um, a lot easier, um, too. It, it just makes more sense. So, anyways, this is how I do it. Um, I prefer to use, this is, this is one of my favorite types of brushes for doing this technique. Um, and pretty much what we're doing is just blending paint together. Um, so I like this size and this, this size also is one of my favorites. Um, just got these paint brushes. Love them. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is start making a petal. And the main thing is to use, I want to use, um, but you can, you can kind of use whatever you'd like. Um, just kind of depends on what kind of effect you're looking for. Um, but I would like white petals and then just a hinge of black. So what I'll do is just take a tiny bit of black. I probably don't even want that much because really I'm just looking for just a touch of it. <laughs> it's just for like shadowing purposes. Um, so I'll start from the center here. Um, you don't have to be super precise, but you want to kind of be at least somewhat uh, kind of map out where you want your petal. And this is just your first coat. So don't worry too much about how it looks right now because we're going to build on that and it's going to look a lot better <laughs> when we're done with it. Trust me. <laughs> so we'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the petal. And we want to, oops, I forgot to flip it over. That happens. But I'm just going to kind of roll with it. So. This is just my way of gauging how big I want my petals. I'll just kind of drag it in. And I'll fill it in. It looks like it needs to come over this way just a little bit. So you just kind of eye it up. Just kind of gauge where you want it. No real rhyme or reason, you know, just like in nature. Nature is imperfect, I'm sure, like every, like everything else. So, anywho, and we'll go ahead and do the next petal. So I like to, <laughs> I like to kind of be strategic with the way that I place my paint on here. Um, so because this is wet and you don't want to keep going over and over again, over the top of it because it's just going to smear the paint that you've already done. So you'll want to let that dry a little bit. So what I like to do is I just flip it right over to the opposite side. Um, and this also kind of helps to keep your petals even. Um, that's just kind of how I do it. Of course, you don't 
have to do that. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of telling you my tips and tricks, I guess, for making my flowers a little more uniform. And again, I just kind of eye up where I want it. So we'll get some more paint. And you want to try to keep using the same side that you used. Of course, I probably lost track by now. And that's okay because uh, it just adds more effect to your flower, in my opinion. So you can really see. I just drag it up right to the tip there. And fill it in with some more white paint. Like I said, it does not need to look perfect. Why? Because this is our base coat. And we're only just painting that base coat. So we want to kind of make sure our petal sides, are they? do they come up around the same height here? Do I need to raise it a little bit? So this is a good way to... Make sure that all your petals are really uniform on your glass. It's just going to make it look a lot more professional, a lot more beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, <clears throat> go ahead and do the same thing on this side here. This paint does dry fairly quickly. I would liken it to your medium bodied acrylic paint for those of you who have experience painting. So looking at this tip here of this petal, I can tell it's a little, just a little bit too short. So I'll just come in and just elongate it just slightly just so that it matches my other petal. I like it. Okay, flip it over. And I'm sure that you can probably have, could tell right now where we're going with this. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep painting this. doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Flower petals are not perfect. And in actuality, the more imperfect you make it, the more realistic it actually looks when you're finished with it. So I'll kind of give you a look. I'm sorry, my hand gets a little sweaty <laughs> when it's inside the glass, but you can kind of see how it looks and how it's building up. It's going to look really cool when I'm done. <laughs> yep, so then obviously you'll have these spaces in between. So your last petals you'll want to do um, in between these ones here. And what I want to do is because these are pretty wet yet, I'm going to go ahead and let these dry. Put the video on pause. And of course in between you'll want to make sure to wash your brush off. If you have dried paint in there, it's not going to give you a nice, smooth texture finish. 
um, out with your paint and make it nice and smooth without globbing and things like that. Um, so just, you know, <laughs> I know it's a little bit of extra work, but make sure to just rinse your brush off and I will be back. All right. Now these should be dry enough. Um, hopefully. <laughs> I, I get a little impatient, <laughs> admittedly. Um, and that's okay because, uh, as long as it's mostly dry, I think it's still pretty wet. But really this part is where you really want it to be mostly dry. It's a little tacky, but I can touch it without getting paint on my finger, which is a pretty good indication that it's ready to be painted again. So um, you want to repeat the process that we did before. Obviously, you'll be overlapping these petals. Don't forget your little bit of black <laughs> for the detail. Now, this is where you want to be a little more careful and strategic and where you place your petals. Oops. Again, I forgot to flip my brush which I do all the time. Thankfully, it actually kind of adds to the effect. So, go ahead and finish this one. Making sure to overlap. Making sure my petals are nice and big. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I love it when it comes together, especially when I'm making a video. <laughs> All right. So you can see my brush is kind of splitting a little bit. So if that happens, if your brush splits a little, just add a little more paint to it. Maybe a little too much black, but that's okay. So I could tell with that one, <laughs> I could tell that I didn't measure correctly. <laughs> well, there was less space, which is, <laughs> again, is okay. I do that all the time. I don't measure things out. I just kind of go with how I think it should look. Pretty perfect. <clears throat> really like the way that one turned out. Okay. I hope that you guys are able to see this okay. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera person. I'm doing this as a pre setup thing. <laughs> And it looked like it was within frame when I was doing it earlier. 
But of course, I will not know until I go and check it out. You do happen to make a mistake. It's, uh, <sighs> I guess I probably should have mentioned this earlier. <laughs> I just take my finger. So I notice I just got a little bit of paint there. I just will take it and kind of with my nail, try to kind of rub it off or even just with my real, my actual fingertip. I wouldn't use an object or anything to try to get it. Sometimes I will take like, the base of a brush and kind of go in after it's a little bit dried. Sometimes you can kind of rub it off. Um, and I say that because this paint is uh, extremely <laughs> sticky. It, it basically won't come off here unless you take a razor blade to it. And even then it's really hard to come off. I know because I messed up glasses that I baked and then tried to use a razor blade to take it off. Um, and ended up giving up after just doing a part of one uh, because it took so long to get off. So that's how durable this paint is. So let me give you a, a little peek at what this looks like. Again, sorry for the, uh, <laughs> the sweat, but it's really shaping up to look awesome. So we got our flower done. Now... Uh, the main thing to do after that is to continue to build on these flowers. What you'll do is, and you can really use any type of brush to do this, I like to just stick with the one brush, uh, although you really don't have to do that. So you just, you find a petal that needs to be redone and you go over it. Of course, you don't want to go over the ones that are wet. So the main thing is, is just to be patient, let it dry. It'll look so much better when you're done and it'll make your life a lot simpler. Yep, and I'll just keep going over the ones that are pretty dry. So this one and this one, I think it was. Hmm. They all seem pretty dry actually. So yeah, you'll just go over them continually until you get the right opaqueness. You don't want it to be see-through really. It wouldn't look bad if it was a little bit see-through. Um, I personally like my petals to be somewhat opaque. Not completely opaque, but mostly opaque. <laughs> Well, very similar to this one here. I may, if I decide to, do one more coat over the top, but typically I just stick with the fewer coats that you do, really, the better. Um, the paint isn't cheap, <laughs> so why overdo something when you don't need to? It's unnecessary work. Unnecessary waste of paint.
thank you again, too, for taking this class. I didn't have a chance to say that. And that is something that's really important. I hope that you enjoy doing this as much as I do. I love it. It's so calming. And it really, for a lot of years, gave me such a sense of pride. <laughs> Which is kind of why I wanted to share it with, with my community members. Here, I got a little bit of white paint where I didn't want it. And that might happen for you a lot more as a beginner. If you are not used to doing this, chances are you'll do that a lot more. I've been doing this for a lot of years, so I'm pretty used to. I just did it again, too. Pretty used to making mistakes and being pretty quick to fix them. <laughs> <clears throat> A lot of times with this process, I'll skip petals and go back and do them. Pretty much try not to invade too much on the petal that I just did next to it. But if I do, that's okay because, well, I can always go over it again. <laughs> I really like the way this looks. <sighs> Reminds me of spring. And summer, I suppose. Probably more summer sunflowers or a summertime flower. <laughs> Which, this flower, I don't know. I don't like to really define it, to be honest. You know, some might say it looks kind of like a daisy. Some might say it looks like a sunflower. I just think it looks gorgeous. So that's it. I hope that you learned something. <laughs> I hope that I taught this pretty well and I hope I didn't blather on too much. Um, again, thank you so much for paying attention and for taking this class. I hope to do many more in the future and, you know, of course, just have fun painting. <laughs>